know, tell them where we are and what. Yeah, we, we are in the Okavango Delta at Lekwara Camp, owned and operated by Kwando Safari. Um, my name is Dix, I'm working there as a safari guide. Okay, and um, Dix, you, uh, you told us last night you were uh, a member of what tribe? Uh, I'm a member of Sen, uh, or Bushman, um, born and bred and raised in the Delta, and finally um, working uh, in the Delta. And you, you grew up as a hunter-gatherer, completely hunter-gatherer? I grew up completely as a hunter-gatherer. I've hunted these animals for food, with bows and arrows, and I've um, uh, harvested some honey, some wild fruits, some wild spinach. The thing we wanted to find out, I guess, the most about is um, your diet as a as a, a hunter gatherer. Um, what what would you say the the predominant sources of food were for you? Um, as a hunter gatherer, about seventy percent of my diet would be meat, and I eat meat from breakfast, lunch. At dinner, a very little um, spinach or uh, starch that we can take since it wasn't that much available and it was so seasonal that there's a certain season that you can able to collect set, certain vegetables or fruits. So throughout the season when those fruits are not yet ready, it's all meat and yeah. some honey. Where, where would you get the honey? We we'll get the honey from trees. Uh, we follow a bird, um, the honey guide, which leads us to these beehives, cut them open, and we take the honey. That's fascinating. Predominantly meat, what, what would be uh, the sources of meat? What types of animals would you, would you eat the most of? Um, mostly, because back those days, we had no... Uh, these modern day weapons to uh, kill animals like elephants. So our meat was more of smaller game, medium sized antelopes, impalas, tsesebis, and we kudus, and whatever we can pick up, even reptiles like pythons, we can get them for food. Tortoise, we can take tortoise for, for meat, and some monitor lizards, and slow running animals like warthogs who we'll chase them down into a hole then dig them out as well as porcupines. You ever been bit by a warthog? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> mostly running like animals like giraffe mostly old ones uh, we would run them we would run after them for like eight ten hours <laughs> you follow the animal you run after it obviously it's gonna run faster than you in the first place so once the animal stops to relax, you are just there. You run and at the same time you track the animal. So finally your old bull giraffe would turn around and charge you. And this is where you spear him. So that takes a lot of um, skill, a lot of energy, commitment. We have this patience. strict belief that when you're chasing an animal like um, a, a giraffe, you don't have to drink water because drinking water means you're going to lose the kill. So that was also meant practically because when you stop to drink water, you consume much of your time to keep up with the animal. So the idea is to run after the animal until the animal gets exhausted and it turns back towards you to charge, then this is when you finish it. So did you not, did you eat while you were hunting or no, no food, no, no water? No food, no Sorry. water until you um, in our society, as soon as we can start to be confidently walking, you have to accompany your parents. Mostly between six, seven, eight years, should be able to, to catch birds for, for food with bird trap that you make. You should be able to take down smaller animals like spring hare, which you dig out of the hole. Are insects a part of your diet at all? Exactly. Uh, we would eat termites, flying termites, uh -huh. after the first rains. What we do, we make a hole. There's a termite hill here. You make a hole mostly on the western side of the termite hill. 
and you make bundles of grass longer that it bends, it takes time to bend. And you light it with fire, you sit there holding it. And this light would attract the termites. Then they come to the light and fall into the hole. You collect them, you put them in a skin sort of container, and then you tie them so that they cannot escape. You take home and you take off. The, the, the feathers are so loose that while they're struggling inside your container, they would automatically lose their feathers. And what you do once they've lost their feathers, they're dead. And you sun dry them. You can either eat them as a snack or you can stump them to make peanut butter out of. And it's stored in a container. You can have it for six months. Peanut butter. Yeah, peanut butter. Termite peanut butter. <laughs> Termite tea. Am I speaking some of your native language? I don't mind. Um, well, in the industry, I'm known as Dix. But at home, uh, my name is Odam Ekwa, which means a good runner. Odam Ekwa is my name. My grandmothers, my uncles, that's how they called me at home. And if I can speak a little bit of it, uh, just to say where we are in my own language. Okay, right on. <laughs> that was great. Oh, fi are fish a part of your diet? Fish was part of our diet, but very little. Because we we not fishermen. But because we inhabited the delta, sometimes we get to a pond which is drying and all these fish is trapped there. Of course we can harvest and eat, but it wasn't a main thing mm -hmm. for, for the bushmen. I see. Are there other tribes that eat more meat or... or Fish. Or fish. There is no tribe in Botswana that eats more meat than us. Of course, there are tribes that their diet is mainly fish, like the Yei people, the guys who introduced the Mukoros, which are the canoes in the delta. We, they are our tribal cousins. They eat more fish than most of the other tribes. But meat is for the bushmen. Any nuts and seeds? That's nuts, of course. Um... um there is marula tree, which the marula liqueur is made out of. And what we do is, the marula fruit is this size. And if you break it open, the hard kernel, if you break the hard kernel open, you get some sort of like nut kind of things. A lot of oil in it. We collected that for, for, for cookie. Mm. So you, you stamp it and make oil out of which you can use as either lotion uh, or you cook with the oil so that you get. you dried the meat? Yeah, How meat. else would you cook? What, what are some other ways of cooking it? Oil is one or stew? Stew, boiled. The dried meat, mostly what we do, we have the piston and the mortar. Uh -huh. So you cook the dried meat and you stamp it. Uh, with the piston and the mortar, and you make it sort of, sort of like soft, and then you drop it in animal fat, which is fried, uh -huh. and then you mix up. That's how you we mostly cook the dried meat. Or you can take it, throw it in the fire, and you can eat it that way. Were there any parts of the animal that were more uh, desirable to eat? You have any favorite organs or or the meat itself? What? What you said, I think, bone marrow. Yeah, we like our bone marrow because we had no cooking oil. And that was our, our cooking oil most of the time, the bone marrow of an animal. And we, we wouldn't go to a shop to buy a bone or whatever. So that, that fat we get from the marrow, we mix it with other herbs. And that is our lotion. Mm. Uh, as well as um, if it comes to the organs of the animal, the head of the animal and the tongue, young boys were not allowed to eat that. Um, young boys were also not allowed to eat tortoise meat because a tortoise is slow. In our culture, growing up as a young man, you have to be fast. So for that reason, uh, boys were not allowed to eat tortoise because we believed 
it will slow their performance and make them lazy. Wow. So for that reason, only elderly people who are tired from most of these activities that require a lot of energy, include running and stuff like that, they are the ones who eat meat, but not for young people. As well as the heart of an animal, that was for, 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 for men and boys. Girls were not allowed to eat that. Um, uh, because we believed it might affect with the well-being of a woman as, as they grow up. So organs like that were only for, for, for men and uh, boys. What, what about brains? Um, brain, there are an, some animals that we put in their brain. It will remind you of porridge. So the brain is cooked. Okay, and mostly we would eat, mostly we would eat um, spring hair, which is a shrub, it's, it's a rodent. We would eat that brain, uh, but m not every animal that we can eat is brain. We choose which animal to eat the brain. Some animals we believed their brain should be poisonous, or somehow not tasting good, or somehow would cause some certain some some disease to you. For that reason, we could not eat their brain. Same as a porcupine. A porcupine eats a lot of uh, bitter, this color hardy, uh, cucumbers. And the liver of the porcupine becomes bitter. So every time we kill a porcupine, we take the liver out, we throw it away. So for that reason, you know, we select what we eat. Mm -hmm. And for a reason, it's always because of a reason. But otherwise, mm -hmm. um, most of the animals we wouldn't eat their brains, mm -hmm. except spring here that I know. Other animals, would you eat the liver? Yeah, other animals, yeah. we can eat the liver. And uh, blood? Blood is made into porridge. As soon as you kill the animal, you cut the throat and you get the, the blood, which is stored in a container. And it's cooked. It becomes a little bit stiff and hard. Then you eat that as porridge. And it keeps the hunting spirit. You know, it gives the hunters that true spirit. Drinking blood is something goes with legends, so that was the whole belief behind that. Uh, milk was not our thing because, well, if, if we've killed an animal which has got a baby, of course milk can be taken from a dead animal already. But besides that, obviously milk should come from a live animal of which we had nothing. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. not mm -hmm. I spent most of yeah. the time, well, in the safari camps, and about nine months of the, of, 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 of the year, I eat this modern westernized food. Uh, when I go home, I struggle to get used to the traditional food that we eat. This would be your millipap, like polenta, beef, nowadays. But before, it would be game meat. So it's really changed. Um, it's really changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I said one last question. I got one more. I could ask you a thousand questions, but um, when you're out hunting like that, do, do uh, um, if you notice I'm barefoot, mm -hmm. did, did y'all go barefoot or did you have shoes or what? How'd that work? Barefoot. Always barefoot. Always barefoot. Yeah. You Only feel like time. you're a better hunter barefoot? Um, you. You feel better hunter, barefoot, and those times there were no shoes. I mean, we are far from everything. So, in our summer times when it's hot, September, October, you can make a sandal out of an animal uh, skin, which you, you put in just to make sure the heat does not stop your activities from the ground. So, besides that, but you can't run with that thing because it's loosely built. Mm -hmm. So in that way, every time you have to run, you need to take it off and carry it. You only need it for the hot side. Fascinating. All right, I think we covered a lot of ground. Okay, great. We could talk all day. Yeah, let's go <laughs> Thank fishing. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>